So in Matthew 18, we see here Jesus talking about children and little ones and talking about how they believe on him and how we should seek to emulate to be like children. So let's read from verse number 1, Matthew 18. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And this is the reason why we don't have children's church. You're wondering why, hey, why are all the children sitting here? Oh, they're, they're noisy. They, they sing loud. I like it that they sing loud. And you know, they make noise. I can't, I can't concentrate. Blah, blah, blah. Well, we have them here because we want them to be part of the preaching, right? And we want to, to you know, I think adults should, you know, we need to suffer them, right? And, and let them be children. And we, you know, grow and try and pay attention to the sermon more. But this is one reason why we have the children here. Because look, because when Jesus preached, he says Jesus called a little child on him and set him in the midst of them. So when Jesus preached, he had children listening to him. Jesus didn't say, okay, now we're going to preach. Let's get the children off into another room, into another building, because they're disturbing me. They're disturbing everyone. And you guys listen to the word of God, and then we'll give them some uh, down version in the other room. So this is why we have children here, because they, they do learn. Amen. They're here in the midst of us, and they were here there in the midst of Jesus. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now the way the contrary view would interpret that, they would say, See, you have to be converted and become as little children, because little children, you know, they, they, they're saved, right? You, if you become like a little children, then when you die, you'll go to heaven. But, but is, that, is that what Jesus is trying to say? Like if Jesus is saying, I want you to be like a little child, Remember, the reason why a little child dies and goes to heaven is because they're ignorant. They're ignorant of the law. Is Jesus saying here, I want you to become as a little child. I want you to become ignorant of the law so that, you know, so that you'll die. No, because obviously in order for a, an older person to get saved, they need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So he can't be saying become as a little child, meaning become ignorant of the law. He must be emphasizing a different attribute and most of us of what we would believe about this is that children very easily trust they have great faith they very easily believe and he's saying hey you need to be converted and become as little children not be ignorant of the law but easily believe on jesus christ don't let your pride and your wisdom of this world get in the way of trusting the lord jesus christ as your savior and i think he re-emphasizes this in verse 4 because he says whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. Because we know pride is often the reason why people do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to humble ourselves as this little child. So the attribute that we are trying to emulate in little children is not ignorance, it's humility. Because humility is what allows us then to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're trying to emulate. This is what Jesus is saying here, to say, be like these little children. And whosoever, whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. Okay. Now look at this, verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that, were they, and that he was drowned in the depths of the sea. Just uh, take note of that, and I'll just explain in a second. <clears throat> Oh, and um, one point I did want to make. There's two points I want to make on verse 6. One is the fact that these little ones believe on Jesus Christ, I think also supports the view that I've just expressed, which is it's not their ignorance we want to emulate. It's their humility. It's their faith. Because he's saying, hey, and then there's these little ones that believe on me. So again, I think it supports that view. Now, uh, uh, let's see what I want to Now, Mark 9.42 is a parallel passage where Jesus also makes a similar statement. He says, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones. So we know that little ones are children, right? And I do believe it uh, does refer to those under 20. You know, I do believe, think you're a child if you're under 20 years old. He says, Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he was cast and he were cast into the sea. Now, with that in mind, the fact that Jesus is saying, hey, these little children under 20 years old believe on me, 
we see here that it is possible for a person under 20 years old to believe on Jesus Christ. So now at this point in time, you're left with two possibilities, right? If you take the other view, you have to accept, you, or you, you may have to accept that children always believe. Well, okay, sorry, let's start again. If you have the contrary view, right, that 20 years old is the age of accountability, you're left with two possibilities to interpret this verse, I believe. One is children always believe on Jesus Christ, which is obviously false. Because then, number one, whoever needs to get saved, if we already believe on Jesus Christ, because of eternal security. But if at 20 years old they die and go to hell, does that mean they lost their salvation? They believe on Christ and then they lost it? So obviously that is not a possibility, right? So that, that, is, one, that is one way you can take that verse, which is obviously false. The other way you take it is that a child is able to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ without the knowledge of the law. Because if you say under 20 years old, they don't have the knowledge of good and evil, meaning in that interpretation that they do not have the knowledge of the law, they're ignorant of the law, that means you must accept that somebody under 20, a little one, is able to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ without the knowledge of the law. Does that make sense? But I don't think that is possible. I, I do not believe it is possible for a person, like I was saying in the beginning, to believe on Jesus Christ and to understand the scriptures in regards to the redemption, and yet at the same time, not understand the scriptures to do with sin and um, the commandments. And I think I can prove this from the Bible and, and, and show that that view is not the right view to have. Um, Galatians 3.24, we did turn to this passage last week. But just to reiterate again, it says here in Galatians 3, 24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So remember again in Romans it says that through the knowledge of the law, we have the knowledge of sin. But you could say, well, it doesn't give us the knowledge of the Savior. But then in Galatians 3 it says because of the law, the law is actually what brings us to Jesus Christ. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. A schoolmaster is somebody that teaches you something. So it's saying here the law teaches you about Jesus Christ. How then can a little one believe on Jesus Christ without understanding the law? If, if you take it that way. Um, look here, Romans 3. I won't read the whole passage, I was going to read a longer passage, but I'll jump down to the key verse, which is, <clears throat> talks about, you know, people that do not accept, um, you know, I guess people that have sinned, which is all of us. Verse 19, Romans 3. Now we know that what things soever saith the law, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in the sight. And look, it reiterates this principle that he talks about in Romans 7. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So you might think, is that a contradicting statement there? Because he's saying here, you know, the righteousness of God without the law. Does that mean they don't need to know the law and they can know the righteousness of God? But then it says, being witnessed by the law. So don't they need to understand the law if the law is witnessing about Jesus Christ? No, no, no. The, the way you need to understand that is it's saying now the righteousness of God without the law. It's saying because the righteousness is by faith, it's not by works. So there is a righteousness that comes that could come by the law, but because we can't keep the law, the righteousness is by faith without the law. Right? So we have this righteousness of God without the law, but look at this. But it says that the righteousness of God is witnessed by the law. Are you guys getting what I'm saying here? So he's say, saying that, you know, if, if, a, if a baby... I'm just trying to show why the view of 20 years old accountability is wrong. Because, like I said, if, it, if 20 years old and under you're a child, but a child can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but a person under 20 years old can't understand the law, which is why they're not held accountable for their sin. But the Bible says here that the righteousness of God, which is how we believe on Jesus Christ and we're saved by faith, which those little ones in Matthew 18 were able to do can only do that because the law is what is witnessing of the salvation by faith. So the law is what witnesses salvation by works, 
It witnesses the commandments, but it also witnesses believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation without the law. Um, and look at here, Acts 10, 23. So that's why Romans 7, when a child comes to that point where they understand the law, they also get the understanding of the righteousness of God without, faith, without the law, which is witnessed by the law. You know, because the, they understand sin, because when the law came, right, the commandment came, sin revived and they died. At the same time, they can also understand this, this law, the righteousness of God, which is by faith. <clears throat> Acts 10.43. This is the Apostle Pe Peter the Apostle preaching. To him give all the prophets witness. So remember in Romans 3, it says, oh, was it Romans 3? Yeah. It talked about being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Acts 10.43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. <clears throat> Romans 1, 15. Paul says here, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So he's saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, those that believe on Jesus Christ, right? To everyone that believeth. Look at verse 17 though. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So he's saying, in the gospel of Christ, it's revealed that we need to believe on Christ to be justified by faith. But then he says, as it is written, the just shall live by faith, which is an Old Testament law passage, right? It's part of the law. So I'm just trying to show you here that it's intertwined, that the understanding of the Bible is intertwined with understanding the need to believe on Jesus Christ, understanding what sin is. It all comes at a, a point when a person understands the law, they understand sin, they also need, at that point can understand that they need to be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Last one I want to turn to. The, the, uh, Paul the Apostle, writing to Timothy here, says here in verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of, who, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And look at this in verse 15. And that from a child... So from when? From when he was under 20, right? And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So again, I think this is a verse. It doesn't just show that, you know, you know, I guess you could take this verse and say, yeah, well, a child can understand that they need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They learn that from the scriptures. But then how then can you take the view if they can understand the law that witnesses of the truth of salvation, they don't understand, though, the law that condemns them? And would somebody believe on Jesus Christ without knowing they're condemned? I mean, there's a reason why when we explain the gospel, we explain, hey, you're a sinner first. You need to understand that you're condemned. Otherwise, how, how, if, without the knowledge of condemnation, how can salvation make any sense? What are you being saved from? Why believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if you don't know that you're condemned to hell?